How you doing guys and welcome to another video where I'll be walking you through how to unlock the TAC-4 AR Stealth Assault Rifle. Now I'm doing this video in response to a question I was asked on YouTube where somebody actually asked me how they could unlock this assault rifle. I explained that you unlock it by reaching Mastery Level 20 on the Marrakesh level. The Marrakesh level of course is available if you own the Legacy Pack of the game. The Legacy Pack is all of Season 1's levels of Hitman remastered and bundled into this game. Now, reaching level 20 on any level is pretty grindy, so I thought I'd make a video walking you through the quickest ways to do that. By that, I mean I'll go through the levels, gain as much experience points per playthroughs as possible, which will get me up to high levels very, very quickly. Now, because on my account I already got to level 20 and unlocked this assault rifle, I decided to swap over to my girlfriend's account. That way I'd start all the way back from level 1, that way I could show you my progress as I went up as quickly as possible. So, the first thing I'm going to do is swapping out to my awesome suit, simply because I think it looks better. And you're also going to want to make sure you bring along either a disposable scrambler or the electronic key hacker. It doesn't really matter which one because they both do the exact same thing. The disposable scrambler you get by completing three story missions on the Colorado level. And the electronic key hacker you get by reaching level 7 on the Isle of Segal. I think that's how you pronounce it. You're also going to want to make sure you bring along any poison you have. Now you can get this poison jar by reaching level 15 on the Paris level, or you can get some poison pills by reaching level 7 on the suburbs level. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, Whittleton Creek. Anyway, it doesn't really matter as long as you have some poison. And it goes without saying, but we're also going to be playing on Master Difficulty because that will grant us the highest experience points for what we're going to do. So, now that everything's set in place, let's get to it. When the mission loads up, look to your right and pick up the brick that's just on the floor. After you've done that, make your way out of this area, take a left, followed by the first right, keep heading along this corridor, Take another right and head towards the radio and turn it on. This is going to wake up the waiter just opposite us. After you've done that, turn back around yourself. Go back, take another right and keep heading along the street. Now it's very important we wake that waiter up. You'll understand why in a bit. Anyway, after that, take a right, keep cutting through this area. Bump into this guard just so he can give us a little bit of space. Pull out your house brick and throw it just to the right of this guard. When he turns around, head in the shop and poison the food. Now eventually, the waiter's going to take this food to our target and that's all we have to do. Anyway, make your way back out this area. Cut across this open area, push your way past all these people. Take the left to the side of his truck and make your way to the gap in the wall. Use your instinct to make sure the lasers on the floor are to the far right as possible. When they are, jump over and head at, through this door and keep going down so we're in the parking garage. Head around these barriers and head towards the brown truck and hide behind it just so we can wait until this guard passes us by. As soon as he does pass us by, very slowly creep around the small boxes in front of us and then turn to your left and very, very quickly run to the opposite side Take the corridor to your left, shoulder up against this white car, and use your pistol to shoot the security camera. After you've done that, very, very quickly run towards those double doors and use the disposable scrambler to unlock the keypad. After you've done that, now you can just make your way through here, turn to your left and pick this crowbar up, and now we can make our way up the stairs. When you have, go through the door, take a left, and immediately run up these staircases here. When you're at the top, keep going forward and turn to your left into a small room. Now, at this point, although you don't have to, but I do recommend that you use your one and only save right here. Remember, on Master Difficulty, we only have one save. You could risk it if you want to, but some of these bits can be pretty tricky. 
Anyway, turn on the vacuum cleaner that's in this room and this will get the attention of one of the guards outside on the balcony. Just wait patiently until he comes in this room to investigate it and as soon as he does and the door closes behind you, take him out. After you've done that, drag his body over to the conveniently placed box that's in this room and before you do anything else, make sure you pick his gun up that he will have dropped. You'll understand in a few seconds. After that, open the door, equip your crowbar and throw it just outside of the door. This will get the attention of the other guard that's out in the balcony who will come over to investigate the noise of the crowbar. Eventually, after a couple of seconds of him searching around for that very thing that's at his feet, eventually he'll turn around and make his way back to his position. Very quickly run out and subdue him and then very, very quickly grab his body and drag it back into the exact same place that you stuffed his friend earlier. And make sure you do the exact same thing again of picking up the pistol that he dropped. Again, you'll understand. Now we're going to have to wait a few seconds now because the thing about playing on master difficulty is that people are a lot more acute to any sounds. So not only did that crowbar dropping on the floor attract the guard's attention, but it also would have attracted someone from downstairs who will also come up and investigate what the noise is. Now don't worry, this is a civilian, so even though we are technically trespassing in this area, because this is a civilian and not a guard, they won't know it, so we've got no worries of blowing our cover. Now that the coast is clear and all the guards on the balcony are taken care of, now we just have to patiently wait until our target circles around and makes his way back to the balcony. After a while of waiting, eventually the waiter will make his way to our first target with the poisoned food and he'll be taken care of and we don't even really have to do anything. At roughly this time, our second target should have made his way back to the balcony. As soon as he has, just do the exact same thing. Use the crowbar to throw it just in front of the door and this will get his attention. After you've done that, just make your way to the side of the door and wait until your opportune moment arises. Now this is where something a little bit messed up happened to me. I tried to grab him from behind but just punched him straight in the face instead. Not that it really matters because there was no witnesses so it really makes no difference whatsoever. So thinking what I should do, whether I should cancel my recording or just carry on with it, I decided to carry on with it. So anyway, I snapped his neck, now it doesn't matter what way you kill him as long as you make sure that you dump his body in this corridor first. The reason being is because just like before, there is a chance that some civilian from downstairs could come up and investigate. If they do, then just wait in this room, wait for them to come through this door, quickly sneak up behind them and smack him in the head with a crowbar then you can just walk out. But for whatever reason, nobody came up to investigate for me. So if that doesn't happen for you, then you can just make your way out of here. Just make sure you give it a few minutes just to make absolutely sure that nobody else is gonna come up here. Once you're confident the coast is clear, wait in this room until the security guard makes his rounds up here and turns around to head back down the stairs. Once he does, you also go outside and follow him at a nice safe distance down the stairs. Once you make your way to the bottom of the stairs, turn right and head back down the exact same staircase towards the parking garage. Once you're down the parking garage, make your way outside, use your instinct mode to make sure no guards are looking in your direction and when they have turned around, very, very quickly, yet again, run across the exact same area that you did before. Take a right and there should be a guard roughly around this area. 
Now, I probably, if I was quick enough, could have gone at this point, but I decided to wait a few seconds, and then when I did think about going, then he turned around. So, the moral of the story is make sure this guy has walked past before you even think about leaving. Anyway, after you have, make your way around the truck, make your way back up the same door we used to come in, head up the staircase, but don't run out this door straight away. Instead, open it, use your instinct to make sure the guard and also the lasers on the floor are as far to the left as possible. That way, we can head around them so we won't be seen by the camera, jump over this wall, and we're in the clear. Now, all we have to do is head back to the extraction point and see how we did. Because we did it with Silent Assassin suit only on Master Difficulty, we will have unlocked the maximum amount of XP that we can get from any one playthrough. And obviously, that's going to do wonders for getting us towards our TAC-4 Assault Rifle. So, let's see what level we get up to. Level 8, not bad, but we've still got quite a way to go, so this time we're going to play it again, but we're going to try something a little bit different to get even more points. Okay, so this time we're still going to want to start out in the exact same location, but we're going to want to make sure we bring along our briefcase, and stored in that briefcase, you're going to want to bring along any silent sniper rifle that you have. Now, the reason I'm not using my Sega 300 Ghost, which is the usual sniper rifle I use on these videos, is because you get that sniper rifle by reaching the maximum level of the Escalation contract in this level, Marrakesh. But of course, if I would have done that, I would have leveled up some. And the whole point of this video is to show you the quickest way to level up all the way from level 1 up to level 20. So, I couldn't get that. So, I'm just going to be using this Seeker 300. Either way, it doesn't matter. But, as usual, we are going to be playing on Master Difficulty because it will give us the maximum points. So, let's get to it. When the mission loads up, head outside, turn to your left, and keep heading down the corridor. Push your way past all these people, and keep heading all the way until you see two people outside the shop. Head inside the shop, and take a left through the bearded doors, go up the staircase, and at the very top of the staircase, there will be a guy sitting on the couch. So, use your briefcase to throw it at his head. After you've done that, pick your briefcase up again, Turn around where you'll see a guard, so use your briefcase again to throw it at his head. After you've done that, take the two bodies of the two people you've just knocked out and dump them in the nearby crate, and that'll give us just a tiny bit more experience points. Not a lot, but every little bit helps. After you've done that, make your way back to where your sniper rifle was, take it out of your briefcase and put it on your back, and then make your way up these ledges and keep making your way all the way across until you get to an opening. After you have got to the opening, turn around, equip your sniper rifle and look at the school. Now depending on where our target is, we may have to wait a few minutes. But not to worry, because it won't take long. Eventually, our target will make his way upstairs and head out towards his open window. When he's looking out of a window, take your shot. After you've done that, put the sniper rifle back on your back and head back towards our briefcase.
when you've gotten to your briefcase, put your sniper rifle back inside it, pick it up and then make your way back downstairs the exact same way we came before. But also, make sure you pick up this key that the guy dropped earlier. I should have done it first, but completely forgot about it. By picking up this key, we will have unlocked a challenge which will give us a few more experience points. Anyway, make your way back outside the shop and keep going all the way along the open area that we started the mission in. Push your way past all these people and keep going to the very end. When you do reach the end, take a left and keep heading straight up this small narrow alleyway. Take the first right and then keep heading all the way along the side of the small stores. When you get round to the back of them, again, you don't have to, but I would recommend using your save here, just because it is roughly halfway through the mission and it's better to be safe than sorry. Anyway, once that's all done, make sure the guy who passed us is a nice safe distance because we are going to be pulling out our sniper rifle and obviously if anybody sees us, our cover will be blown. So make your way up this drain pipe and keep following the set path until we can't go any further. When you get to the top of this building, turn around, equip your sniper rifle and aim it at the giant building opposite us. Now at this point, our target should be in the office with the blinds. If he isn't at this point for you, then don't worry, it just means you're going to have to wait until he does a circle around the area. Eventually, our target will make his way over to the blinds, so when he's looking out the window, take your shot and it's that simple. After you've done that, drop your sniper rifle and make your way back down to where your briefcase was. At this point, there's no reason for us to pick up our briefcase in as how we don't have a sniper rifle to put in it. So instead, just make your way back the exact same way towards the start of a level where we can reach the extraction point and get out of here. By doing it this way, we will have unlocked the sniper challenge. Add that onto the silent assassin suit only on master difficulty challenge we did earlier and that will unlock us the classics challenge which will get us a shit ton of experience points. Then we can just level up and see how we've done. Level 12, not bad. And it only took us two very short playthroughs. And we also got Silent Assassin sued only on Master Difficulty with our Sniper Rifle as well. So we're making pretty good progress. Anyway guys, I'm going to end this video here because I really don't want my videos to go on for too long. But not to worry, because I'm going to be doing a part 2 where I'll be continuing and showing you what remaining challenges you can do to get you up to level 20 as quickly as possible. Thank you for watching my video. And I'll see you next time.